there, I'm Dr Sakai. How can I help today? Well, I'm really struggling because I think I'm going through the menopause. I'm having these really bad mm. hot flushes. Mm. It's just driving me mad. I can't sleep and um, it's just making me really tired. Gosh, it sounds really difficult. How long has it all been going on for? Um, about two years, but it seems to be getting worse at the moment. Okay. So you mentioned being tired, so when do you find your hot flushes are worse? Well, I do have them during the day, but the worst is at night time. Mm. I just can't sleep at all. It's okay. disturbing my husband. I'm blankets on, blankets off all the time. Yes, absolutely. Have you noticed any other symptoms at all? So have your periods changed? Um, well, no. My last period was about 12 months ago. Okay. Um, before that, there were quite normal. They just reduced slowly over a period of time, but I haven't had one for about 12 months. Okay. What about any other symptoms? Because you've mentioned the hot flushes and the periods having stopped. Um, some people can find that their mood can swing. You can feel quite tearful and upset or quite irritable. No, no. More than anything, I, I, get, I get quite embarrassed because mm. it's happening at work. Oh, gosh. Um, okay. I, I've been in meetings and I've had to... Um, go out of them because of the hot flushes mm. and it just get a little bit embarrassing but no I'm, I'm fine I'm not depressed or anything I'm quite cheerful apart from not sleeping but it makes me cranky. Well, I think it would with anybody. What about other things so other symptoms would be difficulty concentrating or feeling like your brain is in a fog? Um, not particularly mm. no mm. no. Okay and what about with regards to being sexually um, active? You mentioned that you you disturb your husband. Um, have you had any trouble with being sexually active no, at all? No, no, it's all fine. Okay. Certainly, one of your concerns that you've mentioned is the fact that you've you know you're you're embarrassed at work and you have to step out. Have you done any reading or had any thoughts about what what you could do to try and help this? Or have you tried anything? Well, my friend, mm. she said she had the same problem. She said she used um, St John's wort, mm -hmm. but I'm, I don't know anything about it. Okay, fair enough. I, we can go through that because there's lots of ways of trying to help. Um, what about for going further? So with regards, to, with regards to the menopause, a lot of the diagnosis is very much just on examination mm -hmm. and on chatting to you. Mm -hmm. um, so we'd, I just need to ask a few more questions just about your social circumstances or whether you've tried anything else. Okay. And then we can move forward with that as well. Okay. So you mentioned your husband at home. Is there anybody else at home? Um, well, I've got two children. Well, they're mm. grown children. Mm. One's got their own child, so mm. I'm a, a glamorous granny. Um, <laughs> No, no, that's, that, that's this just my, me and my husband at home. Okay. And um, what about with work? You mentioned having to go out of meetings. What do you do for work? I, I work in Debenham as I'm a, a, a manager. Oh gosh, so lots manager. of responsibility. You've not found that the tiredness has impacted on your work at all? Um, well, yes, obviously. I just feel very weary. But, yeah. um, but you're managing to carry yeah, on with things. Really, yeah. Okay. What about with regards to um, your general health and well-being? I've noticed from your records that you're on some medication for your blood pressure, is that correct? That's right, yeah. Are you taking any other medications? Have you started taking anything over the counter at all? No, nothing. Nothing, nothing at, at all. all. And I've got no allergies here? No, that's right. Okay. What about smoking? Do you smoke at all? No, I don't. No, okay. And what about alcohol? How much would you say you drink? Uh, well, that's easy. Just on a Friday night, my husband and I have a glass of red wine before we go to bed, and that's about it. Really. Fair enough. <laughs> Okie dokie. Well, certainly it might be helpful to just check what's happening with regards to your blood pressure, your weight, and um, just checking how you are overall. Okay. Um, and then we can maybe talk about the other issues, uh, the way that we could manage this. Okay. Right? Well, certainly what we found is that your blood pressure is fine and your BMI or your weight and height ratio is fine. So then we can talk about the options about how we could manage your, your hot flushes, which seem to be the major issue for mm -hmm. you. So this, there's certainly you've mentioned St. St John's wort, which is what we call a non-HRT option. Okay. And then there's also HRT options. So HRT is hormone replacement therapy. Mm -hmm. What happens in menopause is that over time our estrogen levels fall. And our body responds to that in different ways. Some of that is concentration difficulty. Some of it is the hot flushes that you've noticed. 
Some women get vaginal dryness, which is why I was asking about all of that to well, begin I with. I do have a little bit of vaginal dryness, yes. Okay, fair enough. Well, that's something that we can address as well. So with treatment options, the treatment options at St John's Wort is certainly something you can try and help for mood um, more so. The other options would be if you're going for non-HRT or non-hormonal options, would be to consider things like um, an antidepressant me medication, an SSRI, which conversely actually helps with hot flushes and reduces them. Um, so that would be an option for you. The other options, which would be a medical option, the other option would be over-the-counter treatments, so St John's Ward, but also the uh, there are things such as um, black coash or red clover that some people find benefit from so there's different things that people can use in that scenario and they herbal and remedies and herbal remedies absolutely i'm i'm not that keen on having uh, herbal mm. remedies i'd rather have something that was prescribed that was sure you know. okay well if um, i guess it really depends on what you would like to do and whether you have any thoughts HRT and non-HRT options, we've, we've, discuss, we've discussed the non-HRT and HRT would be another option for you. Certainly from your records, I can't see any reasons for you not to have those. But as far as you're aware, you've not had any history of blood clots in the family at all? No. No uh, heart problems in younger age groups at all? No, none at and all. And there's not been any cancer risk in your family with regards to breast or, or womb or ovarian cancer that you're no. aware of? No. And there's no liver problems that you're aware of, and no. certainly not medication-wise with us. So that certainly means that we could try HRT for you as well. And if your periods have stopped in your age group, then that means that if you've not had a period for over 12 months, we don't have to be worried about fertility as an option or needing contraception. Mm -hmm. Now, we would then think about giving you a continuous form of HRT, and there's different forms that we would use for that. HRT or hormone replacement therapy, because you have a womb in place, we would need to give you something that protects the lining of your womb. Um, so that's mainly one part of the hormone. So you'd need both the estrogen component to help reduce the hot flushes, but also the progesterone because that prevents the lining of the womb from overgrowing just by having the estrogen alone. So that, and that can come in lots of different ways. Um, the ways that we would consider giving you treatment could be tablets, it can be patches, and it can also be, which some people like the idea of or not, things like having a coil put inside or with some hormone gel as well. So there's lots of different options. Okay. What you, are the risks? Well, there's various risks. In the first year of use of HRT, um, your risk of having a clot on the lung or the leg goes up. Um, slightly, so, uh, but as long as you are a normal weight and managing and mobile and active and have no other risk factors, uh, that risk goes back to normal after 12 months. Mm -hmm. There has also been some media hype in the last 15 years with regards to breast cancer and um, HRT, but a lot of the studies that were talked about have mainly been disproven uh, within that uh, period of time. So the risk did double, but the numbers were very, very small. So they went up from three in a thousand to six people in a thousand. So that's actually still less than 1% overall. Mm -hmm. Just remind me, have you had your breast screening and smears regularly at all? Yes, yes. Yeah. I had um, my smear three years ago. Mm -hmm. I think it was 49 at the time. And um, mammogram last year. Okay. And they were all fine. They were all normal. Yeah. yeah. So if you have concerns with regards from the breast side of things, and we can go through how to self-examine your breasts every month anyway, but normally, um, judging from your family history and your, uh, with your mammograms and so forth, I would not have any concerns with regards to that uh, to consider HRT okay. for you. Okay. I've spoken an awful lot and I've given you an awful lot of information. Would you like me to have some things written down for you to take away and have a think about? That would be really helpful, yeah. yes. And then also what I can do is I can signpost you to a really good website that ha is actually run by a gynaecologist. And she and that's got lots of tips and tricks about dietary factors, things about natural clothing fibres and things that would help to try and help day-to-day -day life, make day-to-day -day life a bit more easy. Oh, that sounds is great. Is that all right? Yeah. And then we can book a follow-up and see what you've decided, what decision you've made. That's lovely. All right That's then. great. Thank you. All right. I'll see you in a few weeks then. Thank you.
Bye-bye.